As a NASA spacecraft approached the moon with three astronauts aboard, a major problem arose unexpectedly. The spacecraft, which had traveled 322,000 kilometers over three days, suffered a critical malfunction. The main oxygen tank failed. This tank supplied oxygen to the astronauts, and its failure put them in a serious situation. There was only 15 minutes of oxygen left in the spaceship, and they couldn't go back to Earth in that short time. Sending robots to space is a challenge for NASA, but sending humans and ensuring their safe return is an even more complex mission. Failure is not an option, as it would jeopardize years of effort and human lives. Spacecraft protect astronauts from harmful sun rays while providing them with a livable environment akin to Earth. Pressurized cabins with oxygen tanks and special filters remove carbon dioxide to sustain life. If a spacecraft malfunctions in space, both the craft and its crew could be lost forever, beyond rescue. Surprisingly, a similar situation occurred during the Apollo 13 mission in April 1970, an actual event that reads like science fiction. One year prior to the Apollo 13 mission, Apollo 11 made history by successfully landing on the moon, with Neil Armstrong becoming the first person to walk on its surface. Following Apollo 11's success, Apollo 12 also achieved its mission goals. Now it was Apollo 13's turn to further explore the moon. The mission aimed to land in a significant crater known as Framauro. Commanded by James Lovell, the crew included module pilots John Swigert and Fred Hayes. After bidding farewell to their families, the three astronauts embarked on their journey. The rocket lifted off from Florida's John F. Kennedy Space Center on April 11, 1970. Since it wasn't the first journey to the moon, there wasn't as much excitement around watching the live broadcast. The spacecraft consisted of three main parts. The command module, shaped like a cone, where all three astronauts would spend most of their time. The lunar module, resembling a spider, was tasked with landing on the moon and returning the astronauts. The third part, a cylinder, housed the engine and oxygen tanks, earning it the nickname, the heart of the spacecraft. The plan was for the spacecraft to leave Earth's orbit and orbit around the moon. During this time, two astronauts in the lunar module would detach from the spacecraft and land on the moon. After collecting samples, the lunar module would return to orbit around the moon. Then, they would rendezvous with the spacecraft and head back to Earth. However, little did they know what fate had in store for them, something they had never imagined. It had been 55 hours since they departed from Earth. The spacecraft was on its way to the moon, which was 322,000 kilometers away from Earth. While one of the astronauts was checking the oxygen tank levels by pressing a button, a sudden jolt shook the spacecraft. The force of the jolt was strong enough for the other astronauts in the command module to feel it too. Initially, they thought it might be a prank by module pilot Fred Hayes, but even he seemed concerned and anxious this time. Before they could ponder further, the master alarm and electrical failure lights began blinking. It was discovered that a short circuit had caused one of the oxygen tanks to be completely destroyed. The mission commander promptly briefed Mission Control at NASA about the situation. NASA's Mission Control was thrown into chaos upon receiving this news, as the engineers understood the grave implications of an oxygen tank explosion. Moments later, when they received real-time data from the spacecraft, they learned that not only had one oxygen tank exploded, but the other was also steadily depleting. Additionally, Two out of three electrical supplies essential for the spacecraft had been damaged. Managing multiple crises simultaneously proved challenging for mission control. Meanwhile, Commander James Lovell observed gas leaking from the command module, indicating a leak in the remaining oxygen tank. With this realization, all three astronauts understood they were facing a perilous journey ahead. Now plunged into darkness, the astronauts found themselves without water to drink. 
With only one remaining power backup and oxygen leaking from the damaged tank, their situation grew increasingly dire. Adding to their troubles, the explosion had altered the spacecraft's trajectory, risking permanent loss in deep space if not corrected promptly. Their first priority became realigning their course. Meanwhile, news of the crisis spread worldwide. Television networks, previously disinterested in the mission, now covered the unfolding drama of Apollo 13. Alongside the astronauts' families, the entire globe watched with bated breath. Time was running out. It had been 90 minutes since the explosion, and the command module's last oxygen tank held just 15 minutes of breathable air. At this juncture, NASA's mission control made the decision to transfer the astronauts from the command module to the lunar module. Luckily, the lunar module had its own oxygen supply. However, it was designed to accommodate only two astronauts, presenting a challenge. Nevertheless, given the circumstances, they had no other choice but to proceed with this plan. All three astronauts moved into the lunar module, where NASA engineers conducted real-time calculations to determine how long the oxygen supply would sustain them. The calculations indicated that the lunar module could provide oxygen for two days, However, the pressing question remained, when and how would these astronauts be brought back to Earth? This question stumped everyone, as no one had a solution at that moment. NASA faced two options to bring Apollo 13 back to Earth. The first involved using the main engine to propel the entire spacecraft towards Earth. However, since the main engine was running on the last of its fuel, engineers worried it might fail prematurely. The second option was to leverage the moon's gravity to slingshot the spacecraft towards Earth, requiring less power. Although NASA's mission control opted for the second option, it posed its own challenge. After completing a circuit around the moon, the spacecraft needed to be propelled by firing the lunar module engine to enter Earth's orbit and break free from the moon's orbit. This task, originally designed for takeoff from the moon, posed a significant risk and required a departure from its intended use. The calculations to determine when and for how long to activate the lunar module engine were intricate. Even a minor mistake in these calculations could lead to a catastrophic outcome. Mission Control relayed all the calculations to the astronauts, who followed the instructions precisely. After completing an orbit, they ignited the rockets for 35 seconds at a specific moment, propelling them towards Earth. Two days later, the spacecraft approached Earth at a speed of 322,000 km per hour, presenting them with a challenging task. They needed to execute a delicate maneuver before entering Earth's atmosphere, leaving the lunar module and returning to the command module, which was the only part designed for re-entry. Donning their spacesuits, they made their way back to the command module, where temperatures had dropped below freezing due to the shutdown of all computers. To re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, the astronauts detached themselves from the lunar and service module. NASA's mission control and the world held their breath as this critical moment approached, knowing it meant navigating the atmosphere without control. During re-entry, communication broke down for three minutes due to the intense heat. As the silence stretched on, fears rose that the astronauts may have been lost. However, to everyone's relief, the astronauts finally responded, confirming they were safe. Upon entering the Earth's atmosphere, they deployed their parachutes, a moment broadcasted live on television. With families and viewers around the world watching, celebrations erupted. After a total of five days on April 17th, their module splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, and they were promptly rescued.